You are now listening to the Hot Take Hot Box. Welcome to the Shoulder Strikes MMA Podcast. You are now listening to the Hot Take Hot Box. Welcome to the Shoulder Strikes MMA Podcast. You are now listening to the Hot Take Hot Box. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Shoulder Strikes MMA Podcast brought to you by the Hot Take Hot Box. My name is Matt McSweeney. I am joined... By none other, none other, almost got there, none other than Ty Capone. Ty, how are you feeling today on this? Uh, we are now in June, and it is into the great, the great, we are a week away from the greatest UFC pay-per-view of all time, and Mick Maynard's even saying how great these uh, events that they're putting on are. I mean, what what a spectacular he card in yeah. how long years he said yeah that's he must be on drugs cuz uh, we see one every week we break one down every week and we have another banger to break down that is co-main evented by Alex Caceres and Daniel Pineda so uh, not something I'll be building my week uh, or my weekend Saturday around is watching this filth but I don't want to get too uh hit down in the dumps uh, early on but how you feeling today pretty good uh, it's funny you bring up that tweet. Uh, somebody quoted it with just a picture of the fight card for the July 15th card. And man, that one is, uh, it's one of the worst ever. It has to be. Uh, it's definitely one that you consider bad, even before seeing it. Like, there could be finishes, you never know. But um, <laughs> it's just funny. I just saw that tweet uh, on Twitter right after you said that. So. Uh, yeah, there's definitely some watered-down cards. I mean, the, the next pay-per-view is, is kind of questionable. Kind of. Um, I'm, I'm glad we're not getting the fight that was supposed to be uh, headlining it for sure, but I'm glad Arena Aldana's getting her chance. Um, I think she has a chance, uh, maybe a small chance, but I think she has a, a puncher's chance for sure, um, especially if Amanda's not in her A game. She's getting older. 290 is going to be fun. 291 is going to be super fun. Uh, 292 is uh, setting up to be really good, and I think, I think they're trying to uh, – trying to get McGregor Chandler for 296 in December. So they're trying to really finalize the end of the year, I think, uh, make up for some of this lackluster fight cards that we're getting. You know, um, We got the Ultimate Fighter starting up. I actually like the first episode. I mean, it, it still kind of sucks that when you see how much time is left that you know how long the fight's going to go. And still things like that that you're like, uh, you know. I, I feel like the format, I guess we can talk about it real quick if you want. Sure. Um, the format of it, it just seems very uh, like I don't know how Connor's team wins a fight. I'm sh- I'm sure they will, but <laughs> it seems uh, you know Timur Valiev, uh, Hunter Azure, these are these are guys that have been in the UFC and they're against uh, you know we saw what happened in episode one. Yeah, like uh, and even a lot of the uh, vets or whatever are guys who are young guys who like had a rough couple fights in the UFC and got cut. Like it's not like they're cooked. Like. It, It'd be different if, uh, like we said, I mean, if Jason Witt was out there, uh, you know, yeah. fighting. I mean, Jason Knight's on there, which yeah, is something. Yeah, I mean, I can barely understand a word he's saying. He oh, might be a little <laughs> bit different in the uh, vet category. But like you said, Hunter Azure, Timur Valiev, Roosevelt Roberts, they're not like bums. They're not completely Roosevelt lost. Roberts is 27, 28, they which might is be crazy. They might be bums in comparison to the actual UFC, but these guys, they're fighting, aren't UFC. And some of them, I mean, let's just go based off of Nate Jennerman. Not exactly UFC caliber, so uh, I guess... Six losses in the regional scene. Probably don't know anybody he lost to, if I had to guess. No, um, I, they, did, uh, they did show somebody where I was like, oh, I, I think I, I don't remember. Honestly, it didn't really matter because that guy, <laughs> me thinking about that is going to take longer than his fight on the Ultimate Fighter <laughs> lasted, unfortunately. He, I mean, he got cracked early, and then he got put out. Like, and then he went out, and he woke back up. He's like, wait, I, was, I wasn't out. You see the replay of the guy's yeah, head just yeah. dropping back. You're like, oh. Boy, like that happened quick. Maybe me, me my brother watched it. We were just like, "Wow!" Like, right? because we didn't have we didn't know how much time was left, so we were just like, we just had it all. We we're just chilling. And then we're like, "All right, here's the fight," and then boom. And he's like, "That's it." I'm like, "Yeah, that's it." <laughs> I guess we gotta wait till ne- <laughs> next week to see more of a more of a battle because this was uh, not close whatsoever. But um, did you find it entertaining at all? Or did, I mean, did you like the whole? I mean, I think it's just funny seeing Connor in there beating the shit like. He just put. He, I think he's basically using this just to beat the shit out of people, 
and uh, fight because he didn't even show up to the weigh-ins. Uh, I mean, it was it was very obvious when they announced this that Chandler was going to take this way more serious than Connor was. Yeah, and the sparring, you see Connor's, you know, <laughs> Connor's putting it all, putting his all into some of these shots in the sparring, at least. It's kind of cool to see, though. I'm, I'm glad it's back. Uh, I think there's some definitely, you know, Timur Valiev could be, uh, I, at least at one point, a lot of people were thinking he could be a ranked guy. At the very least, same with Roosevelt Roberts and some of the other guys. So uh, it's kind of cool to see them. And I'm sure there's going to be some decent prospects uh, on Team McGregor that win, right? I think that Landon has guy, to be. I think that Landon dude's going to be pretty good. I think he's the, his first seed. Uh, he looks pretty solid. Um, so we'll see. I mean, he's, he's you know, there's going to be some kind of, um, you know, I think uh, eventually him and she's going to push Chandler, and oh, I don't yeah. think anything's going to really Islam's really come of show it. Up. Like I think it's just going to have so a little bit of drama in there. Dude, at some point. how about Ryan Bader being absolutely jacked out of his mind? Yeah, holy shit, he is a unit. I am also, not he didn't sure. Get really much uh, screen time, yeah, and that's probably on purpose because you know we can't <laughs> we can't be promoting Bellator too much. Uh, he'll he'll get his little tidbits in there, you know, here and there, but he will not be a prominent factor in this whatsoever. They can't. That is just against the UFC code to give any sort of minor promotion to another company. But uh, yeah, I thought it, I thought it was it was fun. It was. Uh, I I just think this episode kind of people. I saw a lot of people online like what that I haven't really watched it. I mean, I told I've been on here telling you guys I've been watching it every time it's on. It's just something to watch. I usually. Watch the beginning, you know, watch a little bit of the training, and then during, like, the personal stories, I start skipping through a little bit if I'm just there to kind of see what happens. And then I always watch the fight, obviously. But um, yeah. I think this this season, that first episode was a little bit of a just a, a teaser for what's about to uh, happen. I, I, I just, you know, you can't really do much with a nine-second fight. So uh, they had to did, do um, a lot of filler there. Did Bracatona win the Ultimate Fighter yes. before? Yes. Crazy. Not that long ago. didn't even know too. that. Uh, he's also another guy that I don't I don't really know what he's saying sometimes. He's kind of crazy. Um, William Bread could yeah. Win. They showed they showed him winning the. Uh, also, he trains with Connor, but he's on Team Chandler, so that's interesting. Um, yeah, they showed him winning the Ultimate Fighter finale, and I was like, this guy won. Yeah. Like, recently, and now he's back. I mean, that must have been a real, a real shitty season. But um, this season will probably be one of the, the 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 more highly rated ones. Hopefully, we get some some Pete Connor. Uh, I don't think we'll get. We'll we'll get any dialogue like we got with him and um, Uriah Faber, but it should be fun. I like how the first thing he like he says they're trying to be nice, and he's just McGregor just starts you'll do as you're told, and like all this like just starts getting <laughs> just starts laying the groundwork for uh, at some point the it kind of sucks though. I feel like it would be way more intense if these guys were like actually in training camp and yeah, were, like scheduled to fight. Yeah. We still have no idea when this is going to happen, so. Yeah, uh, that, maybe December is what I'm hearing. Just, yeah, maybe exactly, and then we're ho- yeah. we're literally hoping at this point because he's in the testing pool, r- rumored allegedly uh, in the testing pool now. So we will see. Yeah, uh, where that leads. So, but you people came here to listen to some picks, and we are here to talk about the card scheduled for this weekend: Kai Car France, Amir Al Bazi, main event from the Apex. Thirteen fights on the card as of now. Uh, I don't know if any of these dropped off or if um, I think everybody made weight. Yeah, and surprise, other than Jared we'll Gordon, see. which that was would that happen earlier, like sometime in the in the middle of this week, I guess. Because uh, yeah, I think so. Poor uh, what was this guy's name Jesse Butler? He he, you know, they flew him in for for this one. But uh, last week I went three and six. You went three and seven. I went negative point five units. You went negative two units. Uh, just big hit on the Greenbow decision. Um, that wasn't last week, it was a week before, but you know what I'm talking about. Uh, we had a rough couple of, uh, you know, like just the Dakota one was a little tough. I had the under in the Falaho fight and it was a minute off, you know, uh, Michael Johnson just off. We were wrong, you know, and then he uh, looked good. Yeah. You had Koski, which really just, that, that's, that's the one that's going to keep you up at night. Brutal. Latifi was just an ugly fight. Uh, and then we both lost on that Fiore guy who had no – I mean, apparently Brutal. Chase Hooper turned into prime Anderson Silva on, uh, <laughs> on last Saturday evening. And then, you know, Silva, we were off on that. Uh, and then you agreed with the decision. So there you go. Now we turn the page, ladies and gentlemen. That's, that's what this is about. That's the good thing about gambling. You can always get back out there, and there's always something 
to lose your house on allegedly. I'm just kidding. Haha, <laughs> we're having fun. But uh, how about it? Kai Car France, Amir Al Bazi. I believe Mr. Kai Car France is the. Oh, well, I guess it's kind of just right down the middle. That's pretty crazy. 110, 110. I couldn't even find a, a book that would give me a favorite on one of these. Uh, I think Amir Al Bazi is a two cent favorite on one of these. So, uh, I mean, this is really right down the middle. Is that the odds you have? It's like it's really like just straight, straight. Yeah, pretty much on this one. Um, on this one sports book, I have it's one sixteen, one fourteen with Albazi. That's crazy, man. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's like, that's the the most I'm seeing, which is kind of weird. But uh, I kind of feel the same way. I don't really know who to pick. No, um, me either. My my, I keep coming back to Kai. I think uh, he's fought the better competition. I think he's improved a lot. We saw what he did to Brandon Moreno in the second fight. He had some success against Brandon Moreno in the first fight. Um, I think his cardio can, can be a bit of an issue. Uh, he's gassed out. He's slowed down a lot. Uh, I don't think he's that athletic. But he's still, honestly, still pretty young. Um, I believe he is just a slight, just a little bit older than Amir Abazi. He's fought the much better competition. I know he has some losses, but I keep going back to all of his recent performances. And honestly, the, the 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 Moreno fight really uh that and the Askar Askarov fight I think surprised a lot of people. I know people um some people had Askar Askarov winning. Um I don't really remember too much of that fight. I just remember him not doing anything at all. Um but even in some of these losses, like both Moreno losses he, he was doing good work. Uh the Baroy Val fight he was doing good work. Um and he has some you know he has some a split over Paiva. Um the, the decision to ask are, like I said, somewhat controversial, but I don't know, man. I think he's he's really done a good job of transforming his career. Uh, I mean, when he was on the Ultimate Fighter, he got smoked by Pantoja, and then he went to Ryzen. He got smoked in the Ryzen. So uh, he's been he's been around the block, honestly. And you know, I I, I watched a couple of Albazi's fights, man. I, I do like him. I do like the potential he has. Um, I think he has nasty nasty ground game. Um, he hits hard, but going back to that Ho Jose Shorty Torres fight, I think this can kind of go that how that went. It was a couple years ago. It was his only loss, but uh, he just got just pretty much got outstruck, outpaced, outdistanced, out grappled. I think uh, Kai can keep him off him in the wrestling. I think he has some pretty good uh, takedown defense. At least it's improving. Uh, working with um, Volkanovski and all those guys has really uh, paid off, and you can see uh, you can notice the difference in his fighting. Yeah, over the years, so. Um, five rounds, yeah, I guess it kind of concerns me, but Albazi, yes, I've seen him, you know, kind of huff and puff in that Jose Shorty, Shorty Torres fight. Um, I don't think his, 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 um, his cardio is, is amazing or anything. Uh, it, it took him a while to get Alessandro Costa out of there, but that dude was kind of sneaky tough. Uh, but he did lose that first round of the Zumagula fight. Uh, honestly, if Kai Carfran shoots on Albazi, I wouldn't be surprised if he took him down. Um, Albazi's defense in general is not great, so I, I lean Kai Car France here. I think the experience gets it done, um, but he, you know, he he, he takes some shots uh, again in both Marino fights. I think he fucked his nose up in the first one, and in the second one he got hit with that liver shot. So I think he's been hit to the body a couple times, hurt to the body a couple times. So you know, I think could this be Albazi's breakthrough? It could be, but. Um, I'm just gonna go with the veteran here. I think you know, similar age. They're both also they're, they're both improving. I don't think Kai Car France. It's not like he's 35 and falling off. So, yeah, uh, that's my uh, that's my thinking. Abazi's slightly larger, but not enough to really I think be a big factor in this fight. And I I really just agree with a lot of what you said based on the track record of strength of schedule. Basically, I think that's a, a, a not a huge factor in determining who I'm going to bet on, but when you're down, when you're up to a, like a minus 110, 110 battle where it's kind of Vegas really doesn't even know who they like or, you know, I don't really, like, this fight is absolutely as even as they claim it is. I'm going to go with the guy who's more experienced, like you said, who's not completely cooked, who has been in there against the better guys. And, uh, I mean, uh, a win against Francisco the Sniper Figueredo is not going to... You know, Alessandro Costa, it's, like you said, Zama Gulov. These aren't guys, Malcolm Gordon, that I'm going to be like, wow, I can't believe he was in there with them. You know, even in losses with two, Brandon Royval and Moreno, he still gets the experience of being in there, knocking out a Cody Garbrandt, which, you know, that for whatever that's worth, but still, it happened. So yeah. I am going to go Kai Carr France as well. 
I'm going to say uh, money line. I don't know how this fight goes, uh, whether it's inside the distance or uh, a any sort of prop. I don't really like anything as I sit here. I guess I should. We should just talk about what the uh, numbers are here. Albazi is plus one seventy. Kai Car France inside the distance is plus three hundred. That's pretty. That's a good number. But um, I mean, I imagine Albazi will be difficult to get out of there. So I'm just going to stay with my money line bet of minus one ten. Uh, I'm with you. I'll ride out with that. Kai Car fronts. Money line. We keep it moving, ladies and gentlemen. Alex Caceres, Daniel Pineda. Uh, what what a what an absolute banger here. This could this could main event a uh, pay per view card if they really built it the right way. Uh, Alex Caceres is a minus one eighty favorite to which is crazy to a Daniel Pineda. Uh, not that it, he not that it, not in this matchup. I'm just saying in general that he's even favored uh, like that. But uh. To a plus 140 for Daniel Pineda. These guys combined have around 27 losses, which is something you rarely see. But, I mean, they have their 48 wins. They have plenty of wins between the two of them. Uh, grizzled vets, you could say. I guess I'll let you lead this one off, Ty. Uh, how do you feel? Well, isn't it kind of crazy? Uh, 28 wins for Pineda, all finishes. That's something you don't really see, even with the Jim Millers and the, the Matt Browns and the Cowboy and Charles Oliveira's. You don't even see that. So Matt Brown, yeah, he's who Conor much... McGregor called a heroin addict. <laughs> Before deleting yes. that tweet, of course. Um, you know, his, his some of his best tweets are when he first wakes up, man. He's He's got some good thoughts on it in, in his, uh, his <laughs> The best ones are the deleted ones. I mean, he really tries to hurt some feelings. <laughs> Him and John Jones, man, they really have a, a hall of fame of, of deleted tweets, but um, – yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to think of Pineda here. I think he's, you know, he's truly kill or be killed. Um, he, you know, he's very inconsistent. He looks a lot different. His fights go a lot differently. Um, I mean, you look at his physique from when he was in the PFL to now. You know, there's a noticeable drop off. Uh, he was one of the first <laughs> PFL drug busts, if you will. Both of his first round wins were overturned. Um, and those were both good wins too. I mean, Movlin like Kabalayev and Jeremy Kennedy; those are guys who don't they don't really lose that often. And for him to finish both of them early, I mean, that Kabalayev guy—he knocked him out. He kicked him once in the leg and, and like thirty seconds in. So Daniel Pineda must have been on some serious stuff. Uh, he did look good his last one against Tucker Lutz. He, he got him out of there like he's supposed to do. Alex Casares, Bruce Leroy. He's uh he's interesting, right? He, I honestly thought he used to stink. Um, and I think he did used to stink, but you know that, that loss to Chrome Gracie, uh, that split to Guan Wang or Guan Wang, whatever that dude's name. Remember Jason Knight yeah. smoked him. Yair, he actually had a <laughs> oddly enough had a competitive fight with Yair Rodriguez all the way back in the day. But then he's come back. You know he had uninspiring wins over Chase Hooper and Stephen Ocho Peterson. Um, Kevin Kroom, your boy, also fit, beat him. But uh, lately, you know the head kick of Julian Arosa that was nasty. That was nasty. He's been grappling a lot more. Uh, I mean, he hasn't been winning some of these grappling matches, but uh, that used to be a real, real, real weakness that you could just you know take him down and and kind of just slice through him. Wrestling, jujitsu, anything that used to be a real. Uh, I mean, he has seven sub losses. Yeah. Um. So he has seven sub win- wins though now too. So and then obviously getting a head kick knockout over Julian Arosa. I mean, you know, Julian Arosa on any given day will lose to anybody, just like he'll beat anybody. So, but also the rear naked choke over Sungwoo Choi. So. You know, the only re- recent loss he has is Sadiq Youssef, and I think he was just ve- very outmatched in that fight. I mean, he was such a big underdog for a reason. So I can kind of see him do, you know, getting his win here. I just, I don't really know what to think of either guy. You know, I kind of get inconsistent performances from both of them. Um, it's the, I guess, Caceres being the favorite. I, I guess that makes sense. I would probably favor him to, to somehow just get it done. Um you know, kind of keep Daniel Pineda off you, but if Daniel Pineda blitzes him, goes after, I think he could probably get him out of there early. Uh, but you know, the cardio is going to be a real issue. Uh, he's like thirty. You know, he's not young. Neither guy's uh, too young, but uh, I think Casares probably wins a decision. I just I have no yeah. action. That's where I'm going back and forth between uh, Casares decision and Casares TKO. Those are the two that I'm going. So if you can play that like double result and maybe get something that's you know, plus money, then I would probably, I would probably bet that. Usually on Fanduel, you can get uh, good numbers on stuff like that. But what do you? What, if you really, you said decision, you would really think that because I, I have, I have a tough time. I, I don't think Dipinia is going to get subbed, right? Like I think his, if you look, I think he's only been subbed twice 
in, re- in some of the most recent promotions that he's been in. Uh, I just had the numbers up, but I lost them. But I have a tough I time. I think he might just get outworked. Yeah, I think um, he probably loses a really like yeah, like you said, unanimous or maybe uh, probably unanimous decision. If I had to really uh, give my opinion on it, so I think I'm going to take that. Yeah. And I am searching for the best number, and the best I can do here is Caceres plus two fifty five decision uh, from Bet Rivers. So shout out the doc. Yep. Yeah. No, no, thank you. And that is my pick for that. So we keep it moving. Jim Miller, Jesse Butler is the next fight. Jesse Butler, we both. Well, I can't, can't speak for you. We both have no idea who the hell this guy is or what he does. Who the fuck is that guy? I do know Jim Miller. He has more losses than Jesse Butler has fights in the professional <laughs> rank. So this guy has been there, done it, seen it all. He's a minus 250 all. favorite in this fight. 275 as high as on some websites. Uh, I guess, really, what 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 do you what do you think here, or what is your lean? Do you have anything you could possibly uh, weasel out of play here? Maybe uh, maybe a Jim Miller decision. I think that could be a sneaky play. It depends what the the prop is, what the what the um, the odds are. He's 39, right? And honestly, he has he has aged well. He has really handled himself for somebody who's fought the guys he's fought. Been around for as long as he's been around. I mean, let's see. When was his first UFC fight? What card was it? I mean, he fought at UFC eighty nine, and we're almost we're we're almost two hundred past. Are we? Yeah, we're two hundred past that. Uh, about to be right. Is that two eighty nine this weekend or coming up or no? We're two ninety's yeah. coming up. So he's t- he's two hundred made uh, p- made a pay per views um, past his debut. So like you know. Gray Maynard, Matt Danzig, Tyson Griffin, Gleason Tebow, Charles Oliveira back in the day. He beat Charles, he knee barred Charles Oliveira in the first round. Like, you know, he's seen pretty much every style there is to see from the Cowboys to the Kiezes to the Takanor Gomes, the Dustin Poiriers, the Anthony Pettises, Oliveira when he was young, Oliveira when he was older. Like, you know, I don't know what this guy, I mean, on a, on a short notice, maybe uh, maybe he can surprise him, right? We've seen random things happen on short notice. We've seen random things happen in the UFC all the time. So, uh, But this Jesse Butler fella, he's fighting out of West Monroe, Louisiana. You know how I feel about Louisiana fighters. Not the smartest in the world. He does have a bunch of submissions. So, it, you know, it seems like his, his strength is going to play right into Jim Miller's game. Uh, Jim Miller's been working on his hands lately. Um, this guy has been knocked out, Jesse Butler. He has a bunch of decision losses. So, um, yeah, maybe, maybe a sneaky, uh, vet lesson happens here. I'm not sure what decision is. I had it up and then I, I didn't have it up. So I can't find it on anything. Uh, oh, it's so not real. Doesn't yeah, exist. You know I mean, it's not a real fight, I guess. So that's unfortunate, but <laughs> I don't know. I guess I would say, uh, Maybe it's Jim Sub. I would say maybe. Jim Sub or Jim, Jim Decision. I would lean like a, maybe an inside the distance because maybe he ground and yeah. pounds him because this guy just gasses out because he's probably taking it on short notice. Well, I mean, yeah. Yeah, probably. He is taking it on short notice, and we don't know what kind of shape he's in. It really kind of sucks. I would really smart thing. Best thing, honestly, for us is that this fight doesn't even have really odds on it, so we can't even bet it. We <laughs> should stay away from it. Because we don't know anything about the other guy. I think that's a sign. I think that's a sign. We should just shut, you know, shut up and dribble. But I, yeah, well, I, I might uh, lock in here later on, and you might see a tweet fire <laughs> off at around uh, six o'clock on Saturday night after I've had a couple <laughs> surf sides, and I'll say, "Listen, I'm taking Jim Miller inside the distance." Well, you know, you'll, first you'll, round. Yeah, some. read that in the, in that voice. So, yeah, but that, that's a that smart happens. thing, I guess. So, uh, good for us, Tim Elliott. Man, got a feel for Tim Elliott. Going through a rough patch in that man's life, uh, you know, guy's <laughs> wife left him, cheating on him with his best friend. You know, everyone All, in that guy's life in the UFC. has turned their back on him. Is Gina Mazzani still in the UFC? She is. I sure hope not. She's, yeah, I sure. she's whooping asses. Yeah, she's one to know. Well, yeah, so. I mean, we would have. I would have lost my house if I uh, had bet that fight because I would have faded the Pearl. shit out of Gina Mazzani. Uh, but I guess, you know, when you take Gina Mazzani down, that's when things start to go downhill, I guess. All right. He's starting. I'm sorry. Tim Elliott is fighting Victor Altamirano, which I think this is a, a, little, a fun fight. But Elliott's the favorite, minus 180, 170. He's going to bring sh- some anger, some aggression into this one. And Tim Elliott likes to get hit and just keep walking. He does not really play good defense, you could say. 
and pushes a hard pace. Yeah, he really does. And, and sometimes that melts, guys. I don't know if it's going to melt Altamirano. I guess uh, I, my instinct would be Elliot, but I don't know if I'm going to have anything here. Um, I'm just reading <laughs> his uh, his quote on why he addressed his divorce on social media. Um, I'm not to see. I'm trying to see if he says anything funny. He's a funny guy. Oh, he's a funny um, guy. For him to tweet yeah. that is something. I would be very mortified. But I think I read somewhere he has this new training camp. And I'm not really sure who who they are, but they train in this mansion or they live in this mansion together and they train um, kind of secluded. So it looks like he's focused. He's in good shape. So, I mean, <laughs> listen, we saw Mackenzie Dern, you know, she got a divorce and she came out like a top five fighter on the planet, like fucking a firing wrecking ball. And I did not, I, th- I thought she'd come out and have a dull performance because she's put them in, she's had them before. So, um, you know, a divorce or personal life issues may not mean anything. Yeah. You know, uh, the, the uh, fade divorce train is 0 1. So <laughs> I, I think it might go 0 2 here. I, I don't love Victor Alt- Altamirano. The, the, I think he could win this fight if. Like I see a, a path of victory because T- Tim and Elliott fights like a, fights like a moron, basically, which he, yeah, he, he tends to do. He does. Um, I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm just reading this quote. I guess they're still dating. That's something. Um, are you going to corner Kevin Kroom in his next fight? <laughs> I guess not. I don't think that's happening anymore. I um, hope not. So he's he's very exciting, very unorthodox, awesome scrambler, tricky subs. He's not really a play it safe guy, and I feel like this is a bet where I want to pick him to play it safe. You know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, that kind of that kind of gives me some some pause here. Victor Altamirano, the the, the problem I have with him is he, he accepts being on his back, kind of doesn't really get up, can get controlled, um, keeps his hands down. He has this um this um tendency to dip his head to the side and like dip down and out to the side. So like. I, I don't know. He, he's done it almost every fight. It seems like, you know, spend enough time on that. You can you can time a, a head kick. And we've seen Tim Elliott do that before. So um, I do like some things Altamirano does. Good ground and pound, good kicks. His takedown defense is just – like he has good offensive wrestling, but he has no no really defensive wrestling. So I think Tim Elliott has him covered here. Uh, he is getting older, so I think that could be an issue. And, again, the outside the cage stuff, who knows? Who knows where his mental is? But it seems like he's in a good place. I can only assume – um, by the interviews he's giving and whatnot, his new, he has a new training camp. So uh, I'll take Tim Elliott here just to win. Uh, I, don't, I don't really have anything on it. However, I am going to take a shot down the field here. Uh, this is my first shot down the field of, of the night, and I think Elliott's going to come out with it, with something to prove here, ladies and gentlemen. He's angry. He's gonna he's gonna try and let the people know that what they did to him was wrong. I mean, there was a picture of him, I believe, Kevin Kroom, Gina Mazzani, and James Krause. You know, I mean, we, we didn't even mention the fact that his his uh, former head coach turned into Jimmy the Greek in the middle of his career. So <laughs> you got it. You got to consider that. And uh, he's going through a lot. He's going through a lot a now. Lot he's people. living in a mansion. He's fighting with people. All day, he's training all day. So I think you're going to see the best version of him. And I think Elliot just even before this has never re- he's been relentless. Even in fights that he was overmatched, he just kept going. I mean, this, this is a guy who, you know, what what his first UFC fight was against uh, Mighty Mouse, wasn't Demetrius. it? Demetrius, yeah, which is insane. I he believe won the he fighter, got a chance. Had some kind of success against Mighty Mouse. Well, well early in much, the fight, but... I think he, uh, I think there was some sort of. Either he shot for a takedown or something, and and Elliot got like a guillotine on him, or he had like a, a hole yeah. where it was like whoa, like he actually like it, it. It was a little scary for because Mighty Mouse was untouchable at the time. I mean, he still incredible, but at that at that point in his career, he was literally they were creating Ultimate Fighter shows to try and find somebody to literally, yeah, fucking you know oppose this guy. So I'm gonna go Tim Elliot inside the distance plus three seventy five. I think that number is fat enough that I could make up for some L's that I may take along the way here on this Saturday night in Vegas, well, um, baby. Well, so it's interesting you look at Tim Elliott's takedown numbers. He gets a takedown in pretty much every single fight. The Ben Wynn fight he did not, but he lost in 50 seconds. Um, and other than that, yeah, he's got a takedown in every fight. Other than that, uh, John Dodson, his debut way back in 2012. I mean, John Dodson's a tough debut. So um, Took down Luis Smolka 12 times. 
he's put he's pretty much getting sub attempts in every fight, Victor uh, Tim Elliott. Uh, I'd be interested to see what his sub line is. You said inside the distance was plus three something. Sub so. is plus five hundred. You can get as high as plus six fifty on what bet uh, bet rivers bet bet doc rivers. Bet. That's what we're gonna call it from now on. <laughs> I don't know if I want to trust trust that hey, guy. Come on, I'll pay you. Um, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I can trust him. Um, <laughs> he hasn't got a, fin- a TKO in a while, but um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you inside the distance. I'm gonna take sub, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna play around here. I think he's gonna come out and make a statement. You've convinced me, Tim Elliott inside the distance. Let's get it. Let's both lose. And he's gonna call ahead. out Kevin Kroom uh, in the post fight in his post fight speech. Kevin Kroom is a big guy. I think he might be able to beat him. However. I'm rocking with Tim Elliott. Yeah, Kevin Kroom uh, didn't have a great run in the UFC, so uh, let's let's keep it moving though. I don't want to. This is it's kind. I kind of feel bad for that guy. In, in, he's got in some reality. good ground and pound. So. I mean, yeah, but I mean, poor Tim Elliott, man. He's that's a rough go at it. But how about uh, Kareen Silva and Ketlin Sosa? Uh, Kareen Silva, who fought Chuck Norris at one point, if you go through her, her topology page. Uh, I don't know anything about Mrs. Uh, Sousa, uh, which she has a nickname, which I'd like to hear you try to pronounce. Um, yeah, I will. Esquetandina. All right. I can't <laughs> wait to hear Joe Martinez kill that thing uh, on Saturday. Esquetandina. Esquen- Esquenia. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, All right. exactly. It was easy the first saying, time. Bro. That's what it I'm was easy the first time. So um, minus 225 yeah, for-, for Miss, Miss Silva <laughs> against Mrs. So- uh, Sousa. Sosa making her UFC debut. I'm not, I right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Coming off a so, big yeah. win against Christina Williams and in Invicta. I know you were, uh, you had her money line that night, which was a good pick for you. Uh, she has a loss to Ariane Carnalosi, so uh, we know her. She got she got beat pretty badly in that one. Yeah, well, I, I mean, she beat the shit out of me, so I don't ever hold it against a woman for fighting <laughs> her. Uh, what do you what what? Do you really like anything here? I mean, this number's kind of uh, a little close to even, more even than I thought it would be, based on what I've seen. Yeah. So. Well, Ketlin Souza, it seems like she, you know she has a, a lot of finishes, but lately she's got some. Deci- her last three wins have been decisions. I think that's no coincidence with her stepping up in competition, right? Uh, I mean, the, gir- the girl she was fighting before that, oh no, one and oh, four. She lost by light kicks to a four and one chick. Um, two and two, four and four. Some chicks she's beaten, and then she stepped up to fight. Uh, a couple chicks in Invicta. Christina Williams, very tall, skinny, uh, just like a very not not really great fighter. And she went the five round distance with her. So the fact that she couldn't finish a couple of them, maybe it's worrisome. But she did go five rounds. And Kareen Silva, I, I saw, um, she's had some cardio issues. So that could be a factor in the third round if it gets that if it gets extended. Kareen Silva, a bunch of fights. Uh, her nickname's Killer for a reason. She's she's got a big size advantage here. I think all of her wins are. By, by finish, eight, eight KOs, seven subs. She's fought anywhere from 115 to 135. Uh, she fought Marina Moroz back in the day at 115 and lost. So um, She also lost to that Marina Matina girl from uh, Bellator. She got knee barred. So her losses aren't bad on the regional scene. Um, and I think when you when you know take into account that she's fighting at 125 now, she uh, dropped Pagliano Batello into a t- takedown, into a Darce. That was nice. And uh, her regional scene fight, her contender series fight, uh, was a bit back and forth. Like I said, she got a little gassed um, in that fight, but she got a nice guillotine. Her um, her subs are good. Her head kicks are good. Her hands are – she's wild, but she has really good hands too. So th- this seems like a violent fight. Both chicks are kind of similar in ways. Uh, I just think Ketlin Souza, she also has good kicks. Um, pretty slick off her back with submissions as well. Uh, she went five rounds at elevation, so I think maybe that could be an advantage for her. I got Karini Silva, though. I think she's going to finish her uh, inside the distance. I'm going to take the under in this fight, just straight up, because I think it's going to be violence. Um, under two and a half is minus 120. I'm going to take that. Minus 120, you're saying? Or, uh, I'm sorry, I got this fight doesn't go the distance at 130. Minus 130. Yes. I like that. I'm going to I'm going to take that with you. I was literally in the process of looking for that on FanDuel and I couldn't there find you it and you found it for me. I like <laughs> that though, seriously, cuz 
I don't really know what's going to happen here, but I have a feeling somebody's going to going to fold. I could see a silver yeah. decision too, but I don't trust her to not finish her and the other girl to not just roll over and let let her get finished. Uh, shout out, but um, yeah. So Silva not not to go to distance. That's a little long of a thing to write in the book. Uh, I forget how to write, but that is minus one thirty, and me and Ty are both going FG, to take that. FGTD baby. FGTD. We're going to start using that more often. Uh, shout out to Escadinha. And we are going to keep it moving. I just butchered that too. But Jamie Malarkey against uh, one of your uh, one of your good friends, Mahatma John uh, Naimov. Naimov's making his UFC debut. I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, isn't that right, Ty? You, you talked to him earlier this week to see how he yeah. was feeling. The Hillman. He um, yeah, he fought in the Contender Series against Colin Anglin and got he got beat up. He looked pretty good in the first round, honestly. Um, pretty quick, threw some nice little low kicks, but after that, he was breathing heavy, heavy, heavy. Um, well, he so looks I, huge for 45. He's a big boy, yeah. Um, he's cut, too. He's, he's, he's the hill man, for sure. But then he lost his, uh, his follow-up fight to Oliver Olivier, I'm sorry, Murad, also at 145. I'm not really sure what happened there, but um, three in a row. I guess he hasn't really fought any great fighters, but, you know, yeah. he's... He has a split over uh, one of these guys, so I, I, I think Jamie Malarkey takes care of him. It's, it might be er, uh, dangerous early on, but I think Jamie Malarkey, second or third round, uh, is is the play here. Um, is this even? Yeah, there that is. It, it's it's something I would stay away from because Jamie Malarkey does like to get hit. Can't he be does, trusted. You know, he cannot be trusted. Uh, Jamie Malarkey in round two is plus four hundred. Jamie Malarkey in round three is plus nine hundred. I kind of like a stab at that. In round three, um, something small, though, I think is what's something I might do. Other than that, yeah, I think that's it. I think that's all I got. Yeah, they don't have it on here, which is very – Colin Anglin almost oh, finished him in the second and the third. So uh, I think that's – you know, he, he's, gotten, he's gotten older. He's gotten – you know, like you said, he's at a different weight class now. He's at 155. Um, so I think that could could be a factor, but – um, Malarkey just seems, you know, he's got more tools well, in his toolbox. Yeah, inside the distance is minus 135. Uh, him to win by decision is plus two. I don't really like anything here, so I'm going to stay away. Like, no number really jumps out to me. But if you yeah. could get, like, a, a, a end in the third or something, and maybe you want to, you know, Malarkey wins in round three is plus 1,000 on some of these websites, plus 600. Like it kind of bounces around. Maybe if you want to just play a little bit with that, if you need something to bet on. But that's just not fun. That is a uh, fight where, you know, like I heard a uh, big cat, shout out the big cat out there talking about like when he's going to the movies or something, like during like big time, like days in like college football, he just bets the unders and like just locks it in. And like, so he, when he's not watching a game, he doesn't have to root for people not to score. And that's like yeah. one of these where like if you're not going to watch it, just, you know, fire in a, a uh, malarkey third round bet and then check it later and hope it wins. You know, like yeah. watching this would be an absolute sweat and it would be uh, basically unbearable. So. But I am uh, I'm gonna stay away. Uh, so are you right? Yeah, I believe you said that. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I think it's a smart smart play. But how about Mister Zaleski Dos Santos? But he is, does not have Dos Santos on his name here on uh, Tapology. He is fighting just Zaleski. Yeah, he's just Zaleski. He is fighting Abubakar Nurmagomedov, a member of the Nurmagomedov family. I'm sure he's related somehow. Uh, maybe he's not. No, but he actually is. I do know. I think he's his cousin if I'm not mistaken, but they have a lot of cousins, so you never know. Uh, Mr. Abubakar is the favorite, barely, though, minus 115, to Dos Santos' is minus 105. I have never been impressed by Abubakar whatsoever. Uh, uh, Omar Gatsiev, he looked good in that fight, but, y y you know, I, I don't know, man. I, you know, the Zawada triangle choke was not a good look. That was a little bit ago, but... Uh, Abubakar seems like the, the one brother that's not in shape all the time for these fights, and he's fighting at 170. He's a big 170, but uh, I watched uh, Zaleski Dos Santos beat the fucking brakes off of Benoit St. Denis, and I have a lot of respect for Mr. St. Denis. I mean, he's getting older. Yeah. These guys are essentially the same size, so it's basically a, uh, a choice of who you like more. Uh, 
do you think Zalet, or I'm sorry, you think Abubakar is going to take him down? Is so I guess what, what what do you how do you see this fight playing out? I should ask. I feel like Abubakar, his only real advantage here is to wrestling, and even then, I mean, we've seen him get um, tapped out on top, right, by David Zawada in his UFC debut. And David Zawada is low level, man. Like, and he had multiple sub attempts in that fight. Yeah, he took down Jared Gooden once. He took down Godzio Margazio once. But, like, those are two not good fighters, man. Like, bottom, bottom of the barrel. And, you know, his striking uh, his striking isn't great. He's, he's like that rock and coast type of fighter, which is just absolutely very boring to watch. He has gotten better since his PFL days. I don't think he was really good at all. I, I, I didn't think he'd even make the UFC. But the thing about Zaleski, the only thing that gives me pause here is he does have – it has been a – what about a year and a half, maybe ish, since uh, you know he failed that drug test, uh, or he had that PED suspension, the USADA suspension. Um, so yeah, that, that kind of worries me, especially at, a, at his old age, right? Brian Ortega got popped for for PEDs when he was twenty three, and he came back looking better than ever. So I think when you're older, I think it's uh, there's a reason you're taking some of this stuff. But he's a black belt on the ground. He has that capoeira style stand up. Um. He's kind of like the under the, the underground violence king, I feel like Zaleski. I mean, he's has some of the. I mean, that that Sanjani fight was insane. He uh, probably he probably committed a crime in, in some countries in that fight. Yeah, that or at was least the referee. Right. The referee, at least the definitely referee did. did. <laughs> um, the Lee fight, the Lee Jang Liang fight, that didn't really go well. He got he got dropped like five times. But remember that Curtis Millinder fight? He was a he was an underdog against yeah. Curtis Millinder, and he. Came out here and just ran through him like butter. Um, the Vendramini flying knee. Uh, remember what he did to Sean Strickland back in the day? So, oh. he, you know, he's he's done some things. And um, sneaky good sub game. I, I feel like if he is the same fighter he is he has been, I feel like he should be the favorite. So I'm going to take Eliza Zaleski here. Uh, money line. I feel like he should be better everywhere. He should be the better map, uh, round winner if it does go the distance. Uh, maybe he gets taken down in the third round or something and, and, and the round gets stolen from him, but... I think honestly, he might be able to get. He should be able to get a finish here. I, I, I trust him much more than Abubakar. No matter, even even post uh, Usada. Uh, so we got minus one oh five here for the money line. Yeah, I like that. I think it's. I'm with you as well. I should go out and proclaim that because I don't trust Abubakar, and I just like this number. So I am going to ride with it. I, I have a feel a good feeling this week about some of our picks. So that means we. Probably going to get cooked, so I'm sorry, yeah, Ty. I'm sorry for tailing you on some of these, but uh, it's unfortunate. <laughs> How about John Castaneda uh, getting back in there against – yeah, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. Muin Gafurov. That's Gafurov. right. Gafurov. Sorry. Close enough. Tajik getting back in there from Tajikistan. He uh, just coming off of a big win at LFFA or LFFA. Only one F <laughs> for against Diego Silva. Uh, Chad Ellinger. I know you, uh, Elling, El- and Hellinger. And Hellinger. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, there you go. And he's got a loss to John Lineker. So, uh, well, I guess tell me something about this fight, because I have nothing. <laughs> well, apparently before the Contender Series fight, Mr. Gafarov was, was very ill um, and wasn't training until like two days before. So Sure. Uh, his, if you watch the fight, his cardio doesn't look great in that fight. Um, he was doing some good work, and then Chad, Chad and Hellinger... I don't rate him very highly. He is, nope. He's like kind of underrated good. He's like, you, you, you look at him, you're like, oh, he's absolutely awful. And then you're like, oh, he's okay. Uh, like he'll beat, you know, some lower level guys. But he's he's not very good himself. And it was just a weird kind of scramble back and forth fight. It, it was kind of close. But I think um, Gafarov got tired. Um, other than that, you know, he, he, he throws some spinny shit, which is could be good, could be bad. I just, um, I kind of like Daniel. Uh, Daniel. I kind of like John Castaneda. He's a D2 wrestler from Minnesota State, the uh, home of Adam Thielen and David Backus, if you are familiar with those two gentlemen. He went there for a year. Uh, He went there for a year to wrestle. And, um, yeah, I mean, he's pretty good. I mean, he has a great nickname, Sexy Mexi. I love it. Um, His fights in the UFC have been kind of back and forth. He made his debut against Nathaniel Wood. Tough debut. Lost that one. And the Daniel Santos fight. He, He was doing good. He hit Daniel Santos rocked twice in the first round badly due to two nice head kicks so uh he also has a good straight left from southpaw good wrestling good ground to pound good scrambling um he'll get hit a little bit his cardio 
that never seemed to be an issue. I mean, in the Miles Johns fight, it looked great, but then he fought Daniel Santos and it looked terrible. So uh, he has a little bit low output, which is kind of an issue, but he also has some uh, regional scene experience. He fought uh, on the same night multiple times. So you know how they get down there in Kabate. Uh, they throw their, they throw, tur- they throw tournaments together back to back to back. So um, I kind of like John Castaneda here. Um, what do I like specifically? You ask. Yes. Uh, I think I'm just going to take a money line. I think, I think I could see him getting him out of there. I like his, uh, I like his Southpaw style, his hands, um, again, kind of low output, but I do like when he goes forward. Um, and I like his wrestling game. I think he honestly might have, might be able to have some success in his own wrestling. So I think that might surprise Gafferoff and shut him down. Uh, I got Castaneda money line. Minus 125 for you, Ty. I am going to stay away from this. I don't like anything, but I would lean to what you just took. Uh, I'm not, I don't trust Mr. Gafforov. And uh, I did like what I've seen from Castaneda, even in that loss to Daniel Santos. Uh, so that's that. How about Daniel Santos? No, not that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Andre Orlovsky and Dante Mays, ladies and gentlemen. The Don- people's main event. The people's main event. Dante Mays just lost us, or lost me, I'm sorry, some money against Augusto Sakai. I don't even know. You, you, I think you, did you take that? I think that? I had Sakai. Did, you did, you did took Sakai because you're, you're not an idiot. I took Mr. Dante Mays, and he looked like a flailing polar bear in the octagon. Uh, and it was ugly. It was 100% ugly. Uh, Andre Orlovsky is about... I mean, this man is about as cooked as you could possibly get, but he's still out there just, you know, grinding it out. He just got rear naked choked in a minute and 50 against uh, Ruggiero de Lima. But, I mean, he's still getting in there, man. He's, you know, he was just, he had a four fight win streak before that. Uh, he lost to Tom Asmell. He went around with him. Uh, he's got, you know, he's, all of his losses are against really good guys uh, of recent. So, you really can't hold that against him. He beats anyone that's really uh, below him, and I think <laughs> Dante Mays is below him. I'm not sure if he gets it done here or not, but he's the underdog here. So I, I, do, I, I mean, what the fuck do I know? Minus one, 110. I'm sorry, my, plus 110, plus 115. Dante Mays is minus 140 here. I refuse to take Dante Mays. If I'm not taking, if I'm not taking Arlovsky, I'm sitting this out. Yeah, I think I have to take Arlovsky just by principle. I mean, Dante Mays has lost. In pretty much any other, most ways you can lose, right? You lost to Hamdi, your boy Hamdi, by a split. And now it's a no contest because Hamdi was on all the sauce. <laughs> it turns out. Can't say I'm surprised there. Uh, Sakai decisioned him. Uh, Mr. Nascimento rear naked choked him. Cyril Gan heel hooked him in the, at the very end of the fight. That was, that was so random. Uh, when he was, he lost by illegal elbow uh, at, at our, in an RFA event. And he got ground and pounded by Alan Crowder. So he's really just had a mixed bag of things happen. He gets finished late. It seems to happen a lot to him. Um, his fights just aren't good, right? Even his win over Josh Parisian, Josh Parmesan, that fight sucked. Uh, and then he finished him late in the third. The Roque Martinez fight went the distance. I could honestly was was kind of close. So I think I got to take Arlovsky just by principle. I mean, he's forty four. He's twenty three and fifteen in the UFC. With a no, with a one no contest, um, four of his last five fights have went to the decision. Two of them have been splits. He, he's gotten a split with Jared Vandera uh, uh, and Jay Collier. Like he's starting to fight low level opposition, and he's starting to really put on un, uninspiring performances. I mean, the Philip Lins, Tanner Bowser, Chase Sherman, Carlos Felipe. He couldn't finish any of those guys. So it kind of gives me some worry, but man, Dante Mays is like re- really bad. He's got all the size and 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 you know he's got eighty something inch reach. Uh, do you remember when when Snoop said he wasn't invited to the gang fight? <laughs> no, was that on the Contender Series? <laughs> it was it was at um, it was at two seventy seven, I believe, <laughs> when he fought when he fought Hamdi, or it could have been on the Contender Series when he fought. Um, some guy that it took him until the very end of the first round. I thought it was at 277 and because it was in Vegas and and Snoop said he wasn't invited to the gang fight, which I thought was just the the ultimate disrespect that you could get while you're uh, out there fighting for your life. Um, I think that's got to tell you all you need to know. I got Andre Orlovsky money line. We'll see how far how that gets us, but I'm with you on that. I'm taking Orlovsky money line. I. 
caution people and tell them, don't bet this fight. Stay away from this. Yeah, please gentlemen. don't. Seriously, I'm not kidding. You need to get away from this as, as quickly as you can. But I am going to take Andre Arlovsky plus 115 as well. So, we keep it moving, ladies and gentlemen. We have Daniel Santos. That's right. What a callback. He is back. Johnny Munoz Jr. What are the line here? We have Daniel Santos is a minus 225, 220. Johnny Munoz is plus 180 here. Uh, I don't. I was not impressed with Johnny Munoz the uh, last time out or the Tony Gravely fight where he got finished in, in a minute. So I guess, Ty, I'll ask you, why shouldn't I bet Daniel Santos? Um, I, I guess maybe because there's kind of a slight market overcorrection. Right? He was plus 178 in like both of his UFC fights. Um, he does have two fights, right? He lost to Arce and he... Um, and he beat he, Castaneda. The Arce, yeah. fight was, Arce fight was kind of close, and then again he got rocked early by Castaneda. But man, he's, he's exciting. He's got, he's got a pretty good chin, it seems like, recovers well. Very risk, you know. Very risky. He takes a lot of risk, but he's got very tricky jujitsu. Very good jujitsu. Very good scrambling. Quick hands. Good one two. Good kicks. Knees, elbows. Kind of mixes it up. Uh, I like him a lot over here. I, I don't like Munoz really much. I think you talked about it at an early, uh, a couple early loss to um, Tony Gravely. He got back in the win column against Ludovic Shalinian, but that guy's pretty low level. Uh, same with same with Jamie Simmons. Like I don't think he'd, any of his wins are really good. Nate Maness, tough, tough debut, but he, you know, easy loss. Uh, he was supposed to fight gravely on the regional scene, I think, and Draco Rodriguez. So uh, none of his wins on the regional scene look look great. So I think I have to take um, even money, Daniel Santos, inside the distance. I think he gets it done, hits him with something, a knee, an elbow, gets him to the ground, maybe he gets a sub, maybe he gets ground and pound. But either way, I think he's got him covered here. I like that, and I think I'm going to tail. Santos, Taylor. plus 100 inside the distance. Tail or fail? Because uh, I like that anyway, and I was hoping you would say exactly what you said, and then you did say the thing that I wanted you to say, which is always <laughs> inside the distance. And I always like to bet an inside the distance, ladies and gentlemen. So Yeah, you do. Uh, Jin Frey, which I'm uh, – I mean, she looked, she looked absolutely jacked on the, uh, on the way-in scale. She is fighting Elise Reed. Uh, we, I've had my future, er, my future, Jesus, my, uh, my past with Elise Reed, where I have I don't lost want your future with her. No, no, thank you. I've lost plenty of money on Elise Reed and, uh, <laughs> whether I'm betting against her or for her, it seems like whenever I fade her, she likes to have a biblical performance and, uh, take out a Corey McKenna or a Melissa Martinez, you know, an undefeated Super Melissa Melly. Martinez. <laughs> She goes and takes her out, or she gets uh, subbed in, in, in the second round against Luma Luke Buname. Uh, and a fight where she was doing well, too. The so. instinct was Jin Frey here, and she's the underdog. So uh, why is she the underdog? Well, she's older, right? She's like 38, 39. And uh, that last fight really, really swayed a lot of people. I mean, if you're getting if, – if you're fighting at, at um, 115 as a woman, and you're getting finished within a minute – Against Pollyanna Viana, you know things. People start asking questions, right? I know I do. Uh, Vanessa, she she has a loss to Vanessa Demopoulos. It was a split, very close. I think even her fight with her wins against uh, Gloria De Paula, Ashley Yoder, two low level fighters. But I think they were close. The Luma Luke Bunami fight was close. She got triangle armbarred by Kay Hansen. Shout out to OnlyFans. Uh, she's she's like a decision fighter. It's just all she is. Um, you know, she kind of has some moments of success and then she gives it away. Right, she's very untrustworthy. Um, at least Reed, I don't, I don't really know what to say about her either because she's kind of the same way. Uh, she'll definitely take advantage in spots like against Sam Hughes and and um, or I'm sorry, she got smoked by Sam Hughes against Corey McKenna, where Corey McKenna just wasn't ready. Um, yeah. Melissa Martinez wasn't ready. Um, I'm guessing Jillian DeCourcy, Jasmine Jasuda Fishes, they just weren't ready. Um, I think she's just really a litmus test, right? Sajara so Eubanks smoked her. Sam Hughes smoked her in the third. Luma Luke Bunami ran through in the second. Um, I, it's she seems like it's just like a, a get right fight for some ladies. I don't know. <laughs> this is such a bad fight. I I have nothing here. I would I think I would take Jin Yu Fry. I think I would have to take the dog in a fight like this. But I'm I'm definitely staying away. I, I listen. I I make bad fights and make bad bets all make bad bets all the time. But 
This is, I'm, I'm, I'm not adding this to my list. I Neither am it. I. I'm going to take uh, at least Reed. Uh, well, I'm not going to take it on the card, but I would take at least Reed. Okay. Plus 135. I think that's fair. One, one, 135 is the number that I'm seeing here. So. Oh, she's the underdog. I'm seeing Jin Yu Fry is the underdog. No, yeah. Well, I said plus. I meant minus. I'm sorry. Minus 135. Oh, okay. I got gotcha. uh, I mean, it could be lined as an even fight because strict. I just don't. I They're don't guessing. Know. They're 100 percent guessing, like we are. No, nobody has any idea what's going to happen in this fight. It's uh, <laughs> and nobody cares. Really, nobody really either. cares. Truly, this is a. Uh, I mean, a lot of these early fights are pretty garbage. Luan Lacerda, Damon Blackshear. I believe we were just talking about Damon Blackshear all not uh, not all that long ago. I think he fought. When was that? In March? Yeah, he lost to uh, ba- one of the Bostrons. And. What is the line here? We have plus 118, 126 for Demond Blackshear. Luan Lacerda, the Brazilian native, is a minus 146 favorite. He's coming off a loss to Cody Stamen in January against uh, the Teixeira and Hill cards. So, I don't really like anything here either. I like Lacerda, though. So, uh, I, I would, I guess, I don't really have, I don't dislike either one of these guys. So, I don't know if I really have a lean here. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. I feel like Blackshear's kind of had a rough go at it. Uh, he had that draw with Zalal, uh, and then he lost to the the worst Bashra brother. But I, I honestly don't know if he is worse. I think they're both pretty solid, but they're, they're both, both good. They both might right. Um, I, you know, if one of them gets more hype than the other, I uh, I don't know. It's kind of like how I feel about the Charlo Charlo brothers. So I think Blackshear is is really good athlete, very explosive when he when he. You know when he does things, it just some sometimes you know he has some late finishes because he uh, just doesn't low volume, low output. Um, very good scrambler, very good jujitsu. I know Lacerda's um, Lacerda's got amazing, awesome Brazilian jujitsu with elite sweeps, elite transitions, good even good wrestling himself. Um, but I think Blackshear's got you know he's got a athletic advantage and he's fought you know he went to the distance with Sabatini, uh, Sabatello, and Chris Matinho. Lost to all of them, but. He went the distance in the regional scene. Uh, he went to. He was in. Had another split loss. Fought Alan Cruz. Beat him early in his career, and they went to the fourth round. So, like, you know, I th- I think he's better than maybe his UFC uh, career has gone so far. I, I feel like he's going to win a UFC fight or two. I just I, I don't know if it's going to be this one. Luan Lacerda is. You know, he's got a Muay Thai um, base, uh, heavy kick game. You know, doesn't really throw much. Goes to the body a lot. I feel like he, that you know, that fight with Cody Stain was pretty close. I think he might have lost, but it was it was a lot closer than yeah than you thought. I think at the end of the second round, into the third, he started doing some good da- good good body work, uh, doing some damage to the body of of uh, Cody Stamen. So I think this this could be an interesting fight. Honestly, I'm really looking forward to watching this one. I think I'm going to miss it, but. Um, I'm looking forward to watching it on replay at least. I think it's going to be a good fight. I don't think Lacerda's hands are great um, offensively or de- defensively, but I don't think Blackshear's are either. So I, I think it could be a very uh, you know split decision either way. I'm going to stay away, but I, I lean uh, Luan Lacerda. Felipe Linz, Monstro, versus Maxime, don't call me Forrest Grishin, getting in there. And uh, Felipe Linz coming off of an elimination of uh, OSP, I, or, right? Is that, is that correct, I think? OSP and them thick cheeks that he's got. Ma- yeah. Maxime Grishin is a minus 135, <laughs> minus 140 favorite over Felipe Linz, who is plus 110, or yeah, plus 110, plus 104, pretty much floating around in plus 110. But do you like anything here? Uh, I, I would lean Felipe Linz. I don't really, I don't really trust either one of these guys. And I think I've liked Felipe Lin since he's kind of uh, seems like he's just in great, much better shape than he has been uh, in the in the past couple go rounds. I think he, did he used to fight? I mean, he has a couple fights at two sixty five or at heavyweight. They both right? do, right? Uh, okay. Christian's fought light heavyweights before. I think that's a, a lot of his losses are um, two heavyweights or at least like earlier in his career, right? Um, I think he had a, a, I think yeah, early in his career, I think he was losing some fights to heavyweights. Moved down, was winning a bunch of fights, and then he ran into Magomed Ankalaev on the regional team, and that's just you know, that's a tough go at it for anybody. Yeah, he went to the fourth round with him. Um, has a bunch of wins. I don't know how you know impressive some of these wins are, but he did go to the PFL. Um, he has fought in M1, S70, the Fedor Emelianenko Fedor Emelianenko Cup, 
Um, I'm wow. sure that's invite only. Uh, I'm not sure if me, me or you can get an invite to that. The Sochi Tornado Cup. So he's fighting, you know, he's, he's kind of fought everywhere. I don't know the validity of his opponents or these organizations, but I mean, I, I got to respect him for going all across the world and fighting pretty much whoever, he, whoever, you know, taking on William Knight. Good win for him in this last fight against William Knight. Um, but he's getting old, man. He's like 39. Uh, he is bigger than Phil Blins, but the Phil Blins isn't young himself. He's 37. But training an American top team, like you said, he's probably in better shape lately. Getting OSP out of there quick. Beating Prochnio easily. He's had a bunch of canceled fights. Um, you know, he did lose to Tanner Bozier. Got finished early in the first. But that was, again, that was at heavyweight. So I think this could be a different version of him. Uh, I'm not going to take anything. I'm going to stay away. But no. if I had to take anything, it would be Phil Blins, money line, small shot. Um, but, yeah. Joe Lins is almost 38. Yeah, crazy. I thought uh, it doesn't I, seem I, for like some reason I thought he was 30. Old. Yeah, like I, I don't know. I felt like he was just more younger in the game. I am going to take Lins on the card. Uh, not right. confidently. I just think uh, I can't leave the first fight out there and not start on a negative or a positive. Uh, I'm seeing plus 115, so that is what I am going to take personally. And uh, yeah, plus, I'm sorry, plus 110, Felipe Lins' money line. I, I just think Christian's going to be. I mean. Not only is he old, he's fought like 50 times. So it's like at some point that yeah. has to catch up with you, especially fighting in events like the Fedor Emelianenko Cup, which, uh, yeah, you're right. I did not get an invite to that, which unfortunate. Um, I don't That's know if tough. I would have I mean, attended. It seems like Russia is a little bit of a <laughs> sketchy area. but Yeah, I'll, I'll say. Uh, so that is UFC Vegas 73 from the Apex. We have a big UFC card, not big, but, you know, it, it's a pay-per-view card next week. So we will be excited about that. Is there any boxing to really get into this weekend? Um, I don't believe so. I think there's Teofimo Lopez, Josh Taylor in two weeks. Okay, that'll be a good fight. Um, there's a there's PFL coming next Thursday, and if you look at the card, you're like, damn, I, I wonder if any of their uh, guys got suspended recently. They did. They did. They definitely did. Uh, Marlon Marais is getting back in there, and so is Impa Kasaganai. and that's just you know, I guess that's the state of the PFL right now. Uh, Brennan Lock Lochnane is the main event. Good luck to them. They've had a they've had some um a lot of news a lot of pressers, a lot of news lines come out, but they haven't had any fight cards, PFL. So it's good to see them get back on track at least or trying to. There's I saw there was rumors that they were gonna buy Bellator, which would be huge for them. I mean that that would turn them into the only uh the only, you know, only other super giant or giant in the MMA organization pool other than the UFC so if they can do that they should other than that though uh no there was some boxing over the past weekend Mauricio Bronco Lara got got beat by Lee Wood uh not a big upset but he did knock him out in their first fight just a couple months ago and now this fight he gets he loses pretty much every round uh so that was kind of interesting to to see um Clarissa Don't. it seems like Clarissa Shields is fighting this weekend yeah yeah she's um she has a bunch you, of belts. You didn't mention uh, the quote. You didn't mention Mick Conlon going to sleep again. Mick Conlon, yeah, I didn't. Uh, Luis Alberto Lopez taught him a nice lesson in his home Belfast. They gotta uh, stop doing well that fucking him. Ireland cards, man. This guy, <laughs> this guy just goes, it goes in snooze mode every time he's fighting over there. It seems like. Yeah, and he's I, been knocked out like ugly, like the last two times I've seen. Like any highlight yeah. I see of him, it's him getting put to sleep, and I'm like, oh man, Mick, this is, you Mr. Know, uh, Connor. You you won't see Connor showing up at those fights anymore. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not gonna back he you won't. anymore. You're getting knocked the fuck out. Yeah, you so, boom. You, you're a some boom. people win, some people lose. You lost. Um, <laughs> All right. Um, next, yeah, so not this weekend, but next weekend, Josh Taylor, Teofimo Lopez on ESPN Plus from New York, and Jaime Munguia and Sergey Deriv Yinchenko from Ontario, wow. California. Didn't know that was a real place. Yeah. But uh, Jamie Munguia, pretty much his whole career has fought nobodies, and he's like this big middleweight that everybody was trying to push for a while as the next Canelo, and he it just never worked out. But now he's fighting Deriv Yinchenko, who, other than his name being very hard to pronounce, He's just a tough, tricky fight. He was t- he was tough for a Triple G, uh, so that should actually be a pretty good fight. The week and the weekend after, Regis Progre is getting in there. He could see uh, he can see himself get a title shot against Devin Haney, possibly. 
with a win here. Tim Zhu the next weekend, uh, Edgar Belanga, Jason Quigley. And then it's kind of like, you know, nothing big until the end of July. That's when it really gets gets popping off. Stephen Fulton, Naya Inoue is on a Tuesday from Tokyo, Japan. Can't wait for that. And then the following weekend, we have Terrence Crawford, Errol Spence Jr., Nate Diaz, Jake Paul the weekend after that. So, you know, not the same stratosphere, stratosphere of boxing, but uh, big fights nonetheless. And July is going to be big for the UFC. So uh, July is going to be a bit, uh, just, I think July, at UFC has two pay-per-views in July, right? The International Fight Week and then the 291. Yeah. And then there's two, there's a couple of big boxing matches. It's going to be a good, uh, good July, good August, pretty much good summer of boxing and MMA. Uh, the sun's going to be, you know, beaming down here in Florida as always. So Shout uh, out. I'm excited for July. I'm excited for the schedule of July and how it looks. And you'll be rooting on your Panthers, who will be taking on the Vegas Golden Knights in the Stanley Cup. So That should be fun. Should that should be, be a fun. good series. There's plenty to going on, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back Monday for a new episode to break down everything that goes down this weekend. Hopefully we all win some money. Whether you're going to fade us or not, I hope you do make some money. Uh, but if you fade us, I hope you don't make any money, to be honest. But, yeah. you know, I, 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 hope you le- I hope you enjoyed listening, though. Uh, and I hope you listen again next week and maybe take our picks. And make yourself some money. So that is the Shoulder Strikes MMA pro, uh, podcast, not podcast, the podcast, brought to you by the Hot Take Hot Box. My name is Matt McSweeney. This is Tiger Pone Dramatic Pause. We will see you next Monday, maybe Tuesday, maybe Wednesday. We're going to be hungover one of those days, two of those days, maybe all of those days. Uh, oh, you know, man. It's been rough lately, but we will be back. Peace out. You are now listening to the Hot Take Hot Box.